Okay guys, let's do an urgent real-time Bitcoin forecast. Uh, and this is a special episode because of the war. Um, will And what will the war do in terms of the price of stocks and the US dollar and of course crypto? Come something that up? It won't do much. That's the bottom line. Uh, yeah, but uh, the central bankers are uh, printing uh, CBDCs, central, central bank digital currencies, and then uh, multiple uh, headquarters in Zelensky's office might have been bombed and um, and bridges are exploding. Let me explain to you why this is a non-event and uh, why you need to be long right now. We're long uh, at 8x, 8x leverage. So imagine using leverage to long under these market conditions when there's actually a war going on. So it's, it's like that episode in Enemy of the State where Gene Hackman looks at uh, Will Smith and says, He's either really, really dumb, or he's really, really smart. But from, from most people's perspective, you just can't tell. But um, I'll tell you what data I'm using to tell, okay, and why we're long right now. Um, partially, uh, I'm explaining this to you because, well, I want everybody uh, around me to get super, super rich. Where else am I going to get my clients, right? If I make you rich, you become a client. I'm not going to... I didn't graduate from an Ivy League. I don't have fathers and mothers who are senators and CEOs of major corporations. So I'm not getting my clients the way uh, wealthy New York City fund managers got their clients. So the only way I get rich is if you get rich first. Okay, so that ha having been said, uh, and besides, my clients are probably wondering right now, uh, we're in a long, do you realize we're in a long and do you realize there's a war? Uh, let me address that. There is not a war. There is no war. Uh, but buildings are blowing up. <sighs> buildings always blow up. Um, the Lusitania, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, I've, I've said this multiple times before. He tells America he's not going to uh, send Americans to uh, a European war unless um, they attack American soil. And what's he do? He sends a warship over into uh, Russian waters or German waters or something. And guess what? Their warship gets attacked. Oh, 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 look at that. They attacked American soil. Now we have um, uh, political legal grounds to attack them. So that's, it, it's, it's always conjured up. Now, how do I know that this is what, uh, this also applies to the Ukraine? The, the Russians have absolutely no reason to bomb these um, Ukrainian government facilities. Zero. Uh, how do I know that? Am I suddenly an expert in um, um, Russian and Ukrainian politics? Mm, yes. What I mean by that is, the only thing you really need to know for anything is money. That's it. Money is the, the thing that drives everything. If you can smell the money, you, you can be an expert on any subject right now. Every, the main driver for anything is money. Um, and every year, for the last who knows how many years, the Ukraine has had a two to one deficit, trade deficit with Russia. Yeah. Two billion dollars in debt to Russia every single year because what they order from Russia what they buy from Russia is two billion dollars less than what they sell to Russia so um, they'll buy four or five billion dollars worth of stuff from Russia but they only sell to Russia one or two billion dollars worth of stuff now here's what's interesting here's the interesting part so if, if you owe somebody billions of dollars every year uh, and um, somehow NATO says, hey, you guys should be a part of us, and then you realize um, that's not a bad idea because I owe this guy money. Um, let's make him a really bad guy and say that he blew up a bunch of buildings. You do that um, and you might be able to get out of paying your debts. It doesn't take a statesman to do that. It doesn't take a politician to do that. Uh, kids do it in elementary school. Teacher, look, he hit me. And he didn't even hit you. It's like he brushed up against you or something. 
uh, happens in kindergarten. They're fabricating attacks to send someone to uh, detention. Okay, now having said that, let's uh, dig a little deeper. If you dig a little deeper, you find out that uh, what the Ukrainians have been uh, buying from Russia, you can get from almost any other country. They're only buying from Russia because the supply chain is it's just easier, it's close. They've been buying um, plastics, um, iron. It's, it's like not really specialized stuff. However, what the Ukrainians sell is different. Uh, Ukrainians uh, sell industrial gases. Um, and if there is, our, if bridges are blown up, if supply chain and supply lines are destroyed, um, guess who suffers more? Russia or the Ukraine? Russia does. So you think Russia is going to attack uh, a country where if I attack you, not only do you not pay me back what you owe me, plus um, I don't get the stuff that I need. Uh, well, can, can't Russia just buy from other countries like Japan or Estonia or Finland? No. Uh, the Ukraine happens to be the world's number one manufacturer in the weirdest thing called neon. Neon gas. Neon gas is used to manufacture you ready for this? Computer chips. Computer chips. And you know what um, uh, China's uh, Minister of Finance uh, Trade said? The, the top guy next to Xi Jinping for the economy of all of China, he said, it is unfair of America to restrict CPU sales to China. Whoa, whoa. Put two and two together. You don't have to be a global macroeconomics expert or political PhD professor. You just follow the money. Just smell the money. Put two and two together and what's happening is that the Ukraine is making it impossible for anyone to produce computer chips. And by not producing computer chips, America is not producing computer chips and not sending it to China. Um, who does that hurt? It hurts Russia and China. And Russia and China are like this. They're friends, they're buddies. Do you think Russia would go and attack something or some country that would, number one, hurt their own uh, strategic um, commodity acquisition process? They need these gases. And do you think Russia would do something that it, it's just one move down the one chess move in advance? You can clearly see that uh, China is going to get hurt, and China just got hurt. And you think Russia would endanger their relationship with the only other world power that's kind of on their side by bombing government buildings in the Ukraine, where all Russia wants to do is maintain a neutral border? They, had, they don't care if the Ukraine operates or not, or whether the Ukraine has gas or lights on or not. They just want to operate a neutral border. And they, they want to make sure that the Ukraine sends them their uh, industrial chemical gases, that they're the number one in the world at producing. <clears throat> so, now, am I the only one that thinks this? Um, apparently not. Because when news of all these bombs hit, uh, the S&P 500, Futures index only dropped 2.9%. 2.9%. And then there was more reports and more reports of more bombings and more this and more catastrophe, more that and more destruction and more. It didn't budge. 2.9% was the max um, that the uh, ES1, SP 500, dropped. So what that means is that normally on, on news of war, I mean, we're looking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 12% drops. What that means is that the people that manage the real money, like BlackRock uh, and uh, the other, all the other major massive funds like BlackRock, they ain't selling. So who made it drop 2.9%? You did. You sold. Meanwhile, we're sitting here longing at 8x. 12x, 30x leverage. Maybe you should get us to trade for you. 
we're, as you can tell, we're pretty darn good at it. You have to understand the macro to be able to apply it to uh, the technical, the TA and the charts. But you look at the charts and say, hey, uh, what's happening on the macro scale? And do they coincide or is there a conflict? Is, if there's a conflict on the macro, if everything looks rosy and, and industry is booming and the charts are going down, that means that somebody knows something that I don't, or at least somebody knows something that you don't. So if you have over five Bitcoin, get us to trade it for you. We're at bitcoin-funds-manager.com. And if you have less than five Bitcoin, join our Patreon because we tell you exactly all the trades we do when we do them for our clients. Patreon.com slash DeFi Fund Manager.